Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So today I'm gonna to be planting out some seedlings in this bed here. And I've also got some seed packets because I'm gonna plant some direct seed in here as well. The direct seed is gonna be pak choy and a napa cabbage. And then I've got lettuce as well. And even some bunching onions to kind of protect the cabbage from pests like white flies and cabbage loopers, which we have a bad problem here with. Houston, we have a problem. We've gotta uncover this, it's been covered, and let's get to it. The next thing I've got to do is put back this drip line. Every two feet, I've got a drip line. That's not enough. I want to make it every foot. So I think I'm going to have to add some drip line right now before I start. I've got to stake this down to make sure that it's not going to be moving around on me. Now this bed sat for a while, so I had some cabbage in here before, and so the drip lines were perfect for the cabbage because they had really far spacing. Now I'm gonna put things a little tighter together. This sat for a while, covered with the tarp. Everything broke down, all the roots and everything. And so this should be real good to start planting in. In fact, let's check. Yeah, it's still real loose and good dirt. I always start the drip line with a drip real close, so that's good, this has already started. Let's see, this one as well. So that's already started with the drip line real close. I'm gonna utilize these two. All right, I got everything I need, including the barbed connectors and the stakes and the drip line. Let's start with this one here. We can just cut it. We're gonna get it cut to length. Doesn't have to go all the way to the end, but we'll get it right before the end there. We'll cut that. And then we can use this, put it over there. The same thing here, right before the end. There we go, and then we'll use that as well. So we need to decide where we're gonna put the drips. I've got one here for this side. I put one, one, two, three. And I got this one, four. I've got the little hole puncher. Go ahead and punch a hole. There we go. Now that all the holes are punched, we'll get the barbs in. So this one's gonna be a little different since I've already got one end cut with the stopper on it. We'll cut this end to length. later that same evening. Sometimes these don't want to go on very well. You know, it's cold out right now. The sun's not out. So this material gets kind of hard, makes it really difficult to get on there. Okay. All right, as I've explained before, each drip nozzle right here, it's every 12 inches. Here is a drip. And then I like to have one start pretty close. So I cut off a little bit before I attach. Okay, that went on a little easier because it was inside, so it was a little warmer. All right, I just finished cutting them all, so all of them need these little end caps, and that'll just stop the flow from just shooting out the back here. So I've got these clumps of hard dirt that I'm breaking apart if I can. If I can't, then I just toss it, I'm trying to make this nice, even quality dirt. It's not all chunked up. All right, so I brushed all this, evened it out with my hands and made this nice flat surface. It's gonna be perfect for planting. So let's position these drip lines where we want them. So these have these little, it came with these little stake things and it kind of keeps them up elevated off the ground. So we're just gonna 
place it there. I'm actually moving it over slightly. Just kind of get as close to there as possible. So that's about, about a foot apart. And that's good. So they say that the water underneath the soil drips out to about a foot. So everything's going to be watered in between. If I place a row right here, it's still going to be watered. So the drip lines are set up. The bed is now evened out. Let's go ahead and start planting. So last night we had a frost and in the forecast, at least for the next two weeks, it is not showing any chance of frost. In fact, in just two or three days, we're gonna have 70 degrees. But I really feel safe in planting these seeds now. So on the this side, I'm gonna plant the smallest and that's gonna be this extra dwarf bok choy and it only takes 30 days to maturity. So that's nice. So I'll be able to harvest this row super quick. These other ones are a little longer, like the Napa is 80 to, nine, or 80 to 90 days, basically. Uh, 70 days for this bok choy, which is a larger size bok choy. This mini one, though, I think I'm going to try right here. And it's not going to get too tall to block the sun from the other plants. So this is the south facing. So the sun comes up over the horizon here, like that. And so it's gonna be angling down this way. So I don't want real tall plants blocking the sun from all the rest of the plants. So these being small, I think it's perfect for that. So I'm kind of a knife guy. I love this knife. It's a really good knife. This is a good sword. It's a bench made. Now, I can't afford nice knives anymore. These are, I've had for a long time. This is the Adamas. I love it. But it's a little too big um, to be opening things like that. Um, every once in a while, I kind of wish I went back to my smaller knives, but being out here, having a big knife is really handy. I use it quite often. That knife. That's a knife. Before I was on this homestead here, I was not using a large knife. It was a small little pen knife, but all right, so let's go ahead and plant this. But there's a lot of this stuff. Let's just scrape all this out. And get down to the finer dirt. You don't need these big chunks. It's just if a seed rests on that, it's not going to germinate very well. All right, so let's make a trench now. This will keep it nice and even. And it says a half of an inch, a quarter to half of an inch deep. The mini pock joy, the extra dwarf, whatever they call it. And I'm just seeding the trench, so a little sprinkle of seeds now these were freshly bought so almost all of these should germinate so i'm not going to plant too dense however it says the spacing is two inches i'm going to make sure that there's at least a seed every two inch there's a seed about one every one inch so i will be thinning this out no question but that'll ensure I get what I need from that. All right, let's go ahead and cover those. They're not super deep. And then we'll pat it down and make sure there's good con contact with the soil. I almost forgot, I always put these in. Now, I put here the spacing. So it actually is four inch. I thought it was two. Sorry guys, it's four inch spacing. So I could probably get away with three but you know, we'll call it four. So I way overseeded that, that's, that's fine. All right, so let's figure out what we're gonna plant here. That's four inch. Now the rows are a little longer, I think, on this it says. 18 to 24 inch for the row. I don't understand that if the seed spacing or if the thin to four inch, but 18 to 24 inches for a row. I just don't understand why it needs that if, I guess for sunlight, I don't know. But I'm not gonna be planting another row of these. So I think I can get in a little closer. That's what I'm gonna do. Plant out this Merrillville lettuce. And it says six to eight inch. However, this is Merrillville. Now, this all got damaged because of the frost and that's why I'm planting more lettuce. I had it ready in case I lost it and I did, I lost most. I still got a couple of these that are still kicking in the center. But I've got these maybe three inches from each other and they're totally fine because I'm harvesting pretty regularly so they're not encroaching in each other. So I'm not seeing any issue with the way that they're growing as long as I'm picking regularly and they're not getting too full. Now when I seeded those, I seeded them as a trench and I just sprinkled seeds rather than 
seed starting in a tray. So I've got 10 of them along here, and I think I'm gonna do the same over here. And we'll get these fairly close, because they, I mean, these aren't gonna encro encroach in this. They just don't get big enough. I'm not gonna let them either. And I don't think it's gonna mess anything up. And that way we can get more stuff in here. So I don't wanna go too close, of course. But as long as I'm feeding them nutrients and watering them regularly, I don't think the roots are gonna mess up each other. I still got maybe eight inch in between, so it's plenty. So we'll start one real close to the edge here. Now it is a little early, I'm gonna be honest, to be planting these, but this is the time I had and in my weather window here. So when I plant, even especially small seedlings, you want to just push them in a little bit. And I mean, not, you don't want to compress the soil too much, but you want some good contact with the soil. There we go. All right, so I got nine along there, a little less than I have over there. I've still got a lot of these Merivilles. I, I, I like this, this lettuce a lot. So I might end up doing another row of that just because it seems like it does better in the winter here than some of these others. Like this is this Grand Rapids. We had a like 25 degree night the other day and I didn't bring them inside quick enough and these all got damaged. So nothing with the Merrillville, they withstood it just fine. So I might do a second row of that, but I'm gonna alternate between that and then the cabbage. Let's do the bok choy, but like the larger size bok choy. I don't know if that's how I'm, you're supposed to pronounce it, but here we go. Next, I'm gonna plant this bunching onion. It's a warrior bunching onion. And it's the exact same bunching onion that's over here that was doing so well. So I've got six pack here of them and they grow all together. So they bunch, and it's called bunching onions for a reason. They bunch together, but pests hate the smell. So I think in between my cabbage, especially, cause I had big problems with pests in my cabbage. We're gonna put these here. Next, I think I'm gonna do the Napa cabbage. And that's the longest to maturity. We'll put that, yeah, we can go a little closer, I think. There we go. So in between the two larger cabbage that take longer, uh, there's more time for these cabbage loopers and white flies to find them. I'm putting some onion, so that'll kind of help protect them, hopefully. Uh, maybe it won't do perfect, but it'll help. Next, I'm going to do more of this Merrillville. And it looked like nine was good, so we'll bring that over. And we'll put it right in the center here, like right there. Now, I've got these bars here all the way down, but these aren't root veggies, so I'm not too worried about it. Because the roots will just grow through the bars, it's fine. Um, it's not going to affect it. All right, so I just looked this up. I was going to plant mustard right next to the lettuce, but it says some brassicas, including mustard and rapeseed, produce chemicals that inhibit, that inhibit the growth of other plants, including lettuce. So uh, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna mess up the, the growth of my lettuce here. So I think the mustard is gonna go somewhere else. All right, so here it says lettuce makes a good companion plant with pak choy, so that's fine, even though that's in the brassica family. So it's just certain ones, I guess, produce those chemicals. So I'm not gonna plant the mustard. That's what I was gonna put there. The Swiss chard got damaged a little bit in the cold. So, but I will do a row of it. We'll see if it does okay. We'll give a little bit of extra room here. So there's the lettuce. We'll stick the Swiss chard right next to the drip system here. And that'll give almost a foot in between because I know that these like a lot, they, they get larger and they sprawl out. Next, I've got another seed that I want to plant. I've got some peas. So I think, I wonder if peas can grow next to now I'm thinking. A good companion plant with peas is lettuce, so that's good. Yeah, you can grow peas with cabbage so and lettuce, so that's perfect. I should have looked that up before I came out here and did all this. All right, so I've got some sugar snap and some snow peas. So I think the sugar snap, I'll just, I mean, it doesn't matter really where. I don't know the difference. I think they're pretty similar in the way that they grow. So let's take the sugar snap there. That's pretty far away from the rainbow chard. And then we'll put the snow peas says two foot, so it's two inch spacing with the plants, but it's two feet between the rows. So one, two, so we'll put that right at the end here and that should make up this bed. Let's get to planting. I've only got six of them, so six of the cells. 
They're growing really well. They always do. This is a good variety for my area, I guess. And these are seed spacing, 12 inches. These must get pretty big. 12 inch, 12 to 24 inch. So we're not gonna plant a lot of these. I mean, we can over seed. That's not an issue. I'll just have to thin them out. And I've got on my markers how much to thin them out. It helps in the future. I don't have to run in and look at those seed packets every time I come out of here and wonder if I need to thin out these plants. So, and here it says packed for 2024. So now these are fresh, they're, they're new seeds. I just got them in. Most of these should germinate. Now this one says germination was 9523 and they had 99%. So, I mean, it's probably a little less now, but I can't imagine it's going to be too much less. So again, 12 to 24 inches apart. I'm way overseeding, I know. Finally, we've got the peas. Now the peas are pretty far spacing. It says two inch and by two and a half feet. So it's really interesting. It's two inch spacing. I, I don't understand how that even works. Now I'm gonna have to probably trellis these at one point because I think they need it, but for now I don't. And I'll just do something called a Florida weave where basically you put stakes or T posts here and run line back and forth and let them kind of weave their way up through it. That's probably what I'll do, but what is the first one? We got sugar snap. You know, peas are a great cool weather crop because they they like this cool weather. Cold never bothered me anyway. And you guys have seen peas before. It's the part that you eat. Alright, so I have enough here to put two in each hole just to ensure germination. All right, so this says 58 days to harvest. That's pretty darn quick. So I'm down here. It says to sow in February to June down there, which is crazy. I guess June would be for a fall harvest because then it's towards the end. But I mean, even August, September, when it would be harvesting, it's too hot. And peas like cool weather, at least from what I read. After dangers of frost, so outdoors will tolerate light frost, but sensitive to heat. So we'll see. I've got extra ones in case this doesn't, if this fails, I can always plant the, the other ones later. All right, and then of course the snow pea. This is March to September, so this is more of a fall. Hmm, how long is this? 72 day maturity, so this is a little longer. Let's try it. They might fail on me. And it's the same thing, it's two inches spacing, so. All right, so the fertilizer I'm gonna be adding is some of this organic happy frog tomato and vegetable, it's a 573. I've also got blood meal, which is all nitrogen, it's the 1200. And I've got bone meal, which is all phosphorus, a 010. I'm gonna add all those, they're real good for the soil and good to encourage the plants to grow now near the peas i'm not actually going to add the bone meal because peas are related to beans and i believe they do the same thing but beans are nitrogen fixers basically they absorb nitrogen out of the air so if you add too much nitrogen to the soil i mean they can uptake it from the soil as well but i think that might be too much nitrogen for them since they're naturally getting it from the air now there's a little bit of nitrogen in this so i'm not going to add the blood meal because I don't need to go too much. Make a little trench. Just a handful along this whole row. And then bone meal, which helps root development. And then I'm just gonna cover it. And basically, this stuff needs to be broken down, all of these need to be broken down by the soil biome. So molds and bacterias and, and bugs and everything that's in there, eat it. And then they, they break that down and that then becomes available for the plants to uptake. So it does take a, like two 
or three weeks even for this to actually start helping the plants grow. We'll make another trench near these peas. All right, so the rest of these are gonna get blood meal and of course all, all the other stuff as well. But let's cover them back up and then we gotta water. All right, we'll give it a nice sprinkling. I'm really gonna soak this today just to make sure this gets really wet. I mean, I'm not gonna go overboard, of course, but I just wanna make sure all the water soaks deep. And I'm actually gonna water it twice, so in like another hour, I'm gonna come back and water it again. And that's because this was fairly dry. There's some moist areas, but it was fairly dry because this tarp that I had over it, over there, um, blew off last night and then this all dried out. Usually this stays really wet if you got a tarp over it. So that's one benefit of covering your beds when you're not growing something in it. But now the soil is hydrophobic. It's just not gonna soak in as quickly. All right, well, we got everything planted. So I'll bring you guys back in maybe a week or so once I see sprouts on these seeds that I planted and then the seedlings, we'll see how they do if they really sprout up and start taking off and looking healthier. Uh, so I'll bring you back, like I said, give me about a week. So it is February 1st and everything has sprouted. All the beans, both rows, have sprouts, the Napa cabbage, and both of the bok choys, as you can see there. And then the lettuce is looking okay. I mean, it's gonna be a little while before that really starts to get larger and show that it's doing really good. Unfortunately, I had a dog come through here and dig up a little section here, everywhere you see the footprint. But I'm really happy, I thought for sure there's a big footprint right here and right there, and those seeds still came up. So I'm happy with that. They didn't, it didn't crush them. Most of these, I think there's a spot here that is missing that hasn't come up. Now this, this dirt is really looking dry for some reason. I've been watering it, but it's looking dry, but we're gonna have rain tonight. So I have a feeling that it'll look good pretty soon here. I'm not sure why it dried out. I mean, I, I don't have this mulch, but if I put a layer of mulch on, I'm gonna crush these seedlings, especially the cabbage. They're just real small. So I gotta wait a little while before I can mulch this, but I plan on doing it pretty soon. I'm gonna mulch it with some hardwood bark. I think that'll be good for it. So I'll be giving you guys updates over the next couple months. And in reality, I mean, according to the packet, I've only got a month until I can harvest some of this bok choy. So that's, that's pretty quick. Thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.